Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well out there. We welcome you to the HCC Weekend Service, and uh, we're going to play a couple of songs here to get us started. We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and we worship Him now How great, how awesome is He Together we sing Everyone sing
clothed in rainbows of living color. Flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. Blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. struck wonder at the mention of your name Jesus your name is power breath and living water such a marvelous mystery holy 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 is the Lord God
Hello, Hattiesburg Community Church. Brother Cliff here. It's good to see you this week. I hope you've had a good week as we continue pressing on and moving forward with Video Church and sharing with people in a different way. I look forward to the days that we'll come back together. We hope that's going to be soon, and we'll be letting you know as soon as we find out that we're able to do that. Until that time, I pray the Lord will bless you as we study His Word together and share this message. Today, I'm going to be coming from Psalm chapter 34, verses 1 through 10, and the title of our message today is When I Call on the Lord. And uh, I love the song. I appreciate Kim singing for us. One of my favorite songs of all time. When I call on Jesus, all things are possible. And so today we're going to find in David's life, the background is David has gone from his highest triumph when he killed Goliath and gave victory to the armies of Israel and became one of the people who would become one of the most well-known, loved kings in the future of Israel. But until that time happened, he would go through the high points of his life, and then he would go through low points of his life. And after that great triumph would come the tragedy of Saul becoming jealous of David and his popularity and his position and his possibilities of all the things that God was doing through his life. And so Saul, in his jealousy, began to pursue David in order to kill him to remove him from his lifestyle. And that's what jealousy does for us. It causes us to turn all of our attention on other people that we don't like or that we're not satisfied with because there's some weakness and insecurity in our own life. And so here we're going to see David, how he handles this situation. And he's running for his life from Saul and he's going in different areas and he'll find himself back in 1 Samuel 27, crossing over into the danger zone. He goes over into the land of the Philistines to the very home of Goliath, the giant whom he had killed. This is Gath. And the king there is Achish. And so he goes there and acts like he's insane, like he's lost his mind just to give him some relief from running from Saul. And now the people there said, hey, you can't stay here. We don't trust you. And so he finds himself running once again. He leaves there and finds himself hiding in a cave called the Cave of Adullam. In this cave, he takes his harp. Uh, he's a singer. He's a poet. He's a writer. He's a musician. He takes his harp and he writes down this particular psalm, Psalm 34. Read it with me and let's begin together. Psalm 34, let's begin in verse 1. I will extol the Lord at all times. To extol means the highest of praise. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him and he saved him out of all of his troubles. Speaking of himself. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Now, what is David going to teach us here? This psalm is both not only devotional, where he speaks of our heart and the grace of God that ministers to us in our times of need, but it's not just devotional, it's doctrinal. It gives us the controlling sovereignty and governance of God in all aspects of our life. And we're learning to trust God more and more every day as the children of God. And he leads us through the triumphant times and he leads us through the troubled times. And so the first thing David said in his life as he had a moment to sit down and reflect, he, he's going to resolve. David resolved. Now, what does it mean to resolve? That means that you put those two words together. Re, I've got to do this again. Solve, I've got to solve the issues that are great questions in my life. And so what is going on in my life that would cause me to be unsettled and I've got to settle the matter and the way that I'll do it, I'll resolve in my heart. So no matter what happens in life, David says, I'm going to praise the Lord. 
And so in these first few verses, he said, I will extol the Lord at all times with the highest of praise. And then he says, and his praise will always be on my lips. Glorify the Lord with me, all you people. Let us exalt his name together. Now, I like that. I think one of the effective alternatives to fear and doubt and depression is the praise that we give unto the Lord that we love him because we trust him and we know that his desire is for blessings and goodness in our life. And so God works in many ways. The Bible tells us that in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, that uh, God works good in all things. It doesn't say all things are good, but he said he works good through all things to those who are called according to his purpose, to those who love him. And so sometimes God will move in our life and he'll just help us to realize that he's in control of our life. This would be like from the book of Daniel in the Old Testament when Daniel was being cast into the den of lions. And God would go down and close the mouths of the lion. He was in complete control. And he would give Daniel freedom from a, a, an unsurmountable foe of thinking he would be dead in just a short period of time. God conquers in our life. He did this through David, the one who's writing this psalm. How does God conquer our enemies? He conquered the giant Goliath. And he did it in such a powerful way that the world would know that, hey, there is a God in Israel, and he's a powerful God, and he's in control. And so we have a reason to praise him. He also helps us as we continue on the journey. Even though David was on the run, he would find himself in the presence of the Lord in the cave of Adullam. And so God comforts us even through our greatest trials in life. This past Saturday night, I always go out into my field and I pray for all of you. And I pray that God would bless us and bless the people who are the children of God, not only in the local churches such as ours, Hattiesburg Community Church, but all of the churches. I pray that God would be exalted and highly praised and God would be recognized and people would resolve and make up their mind. The most important thing in my life is a right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you might want to think about that today. And this past Saturday night as I was out in my field, I go out there to get by myself, no cell phone, and no lights, just darkness, and usually me and my daughter's dog, whose name is Maverick, that's my prayer partner, and we get out before the stars and we just open our heart unto the Lord. Well, this past Saturday night, the Lord laid on my heart, rather than doing a lot of talking, I, I began to sing praises unto Him. And you say, Brother Cliff, are you a singer? Not really, but I like to sing. And I just started praising Him and singing and praising and singing and praising and singing. And after a, a, a period of time went by, I cannot tell you the peace that was in my soul because I had chosen to praise the Lord at all times with the highest of praise. And, and I want to invite you, just like David did as he's writing this new piece of poetry, which is wisdom literature, which will be recorded as a 34th Psalm. He said, listen, let's all gather together and let's exalt and praise the Lord. Would you resolve to do that in your life this week? And, and you say, well, Brother Cliff, I would if I could get my mind off of all the things that I'm being challenged by. Well, that brings me to number two. The second thing we see in this scripture today is remembrance. And so God is teaching us to say, Lord, what is it that I need to remember? So number two leads us into the scripture where he says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Now think of that. David is in the midst of a major crisis of his life and he realizes I need to praise the Lord and then I need to seek him and I need to call unto him and he answered me and he delivered me. And so oftentimes in our life, we we get the problem that I think a lot of people have that we begin to look at the wrong things. We don't begin to look at things that are excellent and praiseworthy in the sight of God. We begin to listen to too many news commentators that tell us how horrible life is. And we are in changing times. This is something the world has never seen, what we are living through today. And so it's affecting people not only physically, the fact that you could receive a virus that could take your life, but it's beginning to affect people emotionally. Uh, Ray told me before this broadcast that the latest report is one out of every six Americans is unemployed at this time. Stop and think about that. 
That's an unbelievable amount of people that are not making an income. That's an unbelievable amount of people that are looking at their children and saying, listen, I, I don't really know what we're going to do in the future. That's where our country is. That's where the world is. And so here, if we're not careful, we look at all of these things that are challenges. So it's hard for us to take our eyes off things that make us have fear, that make us have doubt, that lead us into the depths of depression. And many people are making snap decisions that are destructive for their lives. We see that happening every single week that we live. And so here he says, Then I remembered the Lord, and I called unto him, and the Lord delivered me. And I began to remember, Lord, have you delivered me before? You remember what David told King Saul when Goliath was cursing the armies of the living God, the armies of Israel? And, and Saul said, who are you to fight a giant? He said, well, I'll tell you this, God has been with me. And I remember a time that I asked the Lord to help me, and he gave me power to kill a bear who was threatening our flocks. I remember another time he gave me power to kill a lion that was threatening my father's flocks. And all of these things God has done, and I began to remember those things. Can I ask you to think back with me today and say, Lord, what is my mind fixed on? Is it fixed on my enemy is it fixed on the, the schemes of the enemy? Is it fixed on things that cause me to fear and have doubt and depression? If it is, then I need to pause here, Lord, and I need to remember you. This poor man, he said, this poor man called on the Lord, and the Lord heard him, and he saved me from all my troubles. Time out right there. The word stop should be the stop sign in your life. Lord, would you help me be able to resolve to praise you because I have stopped to remember how wonderful you are, how good you are, how gracious you are, how kind you are, how merciful you are. And you may want to stop right here with your time out and say, Lord, how have you blessed me in my life? And if you begin to do that, then you'll stop telling people how bad it is in the world. And you'll stop telling people how powerful the enemy is that seems to be winning the battle. And I'm here to tell you, the enemy will not win the battle. He may win a few skirmishes, but he's a defeated foe because we have a king above all kings. And so stop, stop, stop. Remember, remember, remember. If you want to say something that's worth the world hearing, why don't you go ahead and hold up your hand and testify and say, let me tell you how great is my God. Let me tell you what he's done in my life. Let me tell you how he saved my soul. Let me tell you how he transformed me. Let me tell you how he kept me from losing my family or losing my wife because of stupidity. On my part, it was alcohol. On your part, I don't know what it is. But remember the blessings of the Lord and how great and how redemptive our God is. A God who is redemptive looks at people who are down and he comes and puts his arms around them and he picks them up. He brings them to the crossroads of life and he says, walk in this way. This is the way you're to go. He brings them to the place where they realize and they begin to experience brokenness in their heart. And he begins to heal broken hearts and put the pieces back together. And so David not only resolved, but David also remembered. And the last thing we're going to see in our scripture today is that David uh, experienced realization. It's real. And I realize this. And so David realized in verses 7 through 10, he discovered two great truths. And the first great truth that he discovers is that God protects us. And so he says in verse 7, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. God's not through with David. David is going to rise to be the king that is the king that is known as a man after God's own heart. David is going to do miracle after miracle after miracle. God is not through with David and his angel encamps around him to protect him in life. And if there was ever anyone who needed protection, it was David at this time. And so David was a person who first he looked at the people and the forces that were working against him and he became discouraged. 
And, and he ran, and he's out in the wilderness, and he's hiding in a cave of Adullam. But then it says in the scriptures that if you look a little deeper, you will discover the ranks of the radiant ones. And so David begins to look, and he begins to see the powerful, uh, not adversaries, but the advocates of the people of God. He's like Elisha who told his servant, Lord, open the eyes of my servant that he may see all of these warriors and the chariots of fire around the city in which we're in who are for us and against our enemies. And so he began to look deeper in his life and he started standing in a position where he could see the glorious, radiant, almighty angels of God standing in battle position with swords drawn ready for the attack of any enemies that come against us. And he began to realize, God is protecting me. And then he looks even deeper than that, and he sees what is the revelation of what is to come that is recorded in the book of Revelation, that there is one who is the Holy One himself, sitting on a white stallion, his sword drawn, not the sword of uh, Goliath that David got from Nob and Abimelech, but he sees the sword of the Lord drawn. His eyes are like lightning. His robe is white. It's dipped in blood. And it's got an inscription on the vesture of his thigh that says, Lord of lords and King of kings. And he is coming to conquer and defeat our enemies. And so David comes to the realization, number one, God is here to protect me. And then the last revelation he comes to, God is here to provide for me. And so verse 8 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. From Gath, he goes to the cave of Adullam, which would become his refuge. And in that cave, God would change that cave. I said this one time 10 years ago. He changes the cave of Adullam from a cave to a cathedral where he begins to worship him. He begins to sing praise unto him. He begins to write the word of God, Psalm 34, and puts it down. And verse 10 says, The lions may grow weak and hungry that you hear roaring in the distant, but those who seek the Lord, they lack no good thing. What does David have around that cave? Can you see him there? He's got faithful friends who would die for him. He, he's got meat there's lamb hanging in that cave and they're going to have shawarma or shish kebabs. They're going to grill some lamb and they're going to sit around the fire and there's going to be large quantities of milk and water and wine and there's going to be plenty of bread and there's going to be honey and there's going to be fig and there's going to be grapes. There's going to be baskets filled with vegetables and fruits and David is sitting there around that fire with all of these things that God has provided for him. And you know what he probably says? my favorite song that was sung just prior to this message, he probably said, when I call on Jesus, all things are possible. I'm in a cathedral of worship. I've got people that love me around me. And God has provided everything I need. And he's given me life today. Would you accept what God has given you? And would you let God give you some resolve. Resettle this issue that I don't know what everybody else is going to do, but I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to thank Him. I'm going to exalt Him. The highest praise, I'm going to invite people to come and gather with me and let's praise the Lord for our God is great. And when I call upon Him, all things are possible. What do you need to call on Him for this week? Is it comfort for your hurting soul? Is it confidence that we're going to overcome everything that comes our way? Is it a calling that's an anointed, a holy anointing from God that I have a testimony to share with others that may need to hear a testimony of a living God? Lord, when I call on you, all things are possible. Lord, would you protect my family? Would you protect our spiritual family? Would you protect the children of God, and would you provide our every need, and would you give us a message of hope to a very troubled world that when we call on Jesus, get yourself ready. The miracles and the abounding love of God cannot be stopped. It's like the waves of the ocean that come upon us. May the Lord drench you in all of his goodness and mercy this week. 
And may you be a person who becomes a person every day. Lord, I'm calling unto you. When I call on Jesus, all things are possible. Would you bow with me for a word of prayer? Let's ask God to bless us and to use us in a mighty way this week. And let's be confident that wherever we are, it can become a place that is a holy altar unto the Lord. And we can sing praises to his name. Would you bow with me, please? Lord, we bow in your presence. We thank you for love and for life. We thank you, Lord, for your plan for us. And we ask you humbly, God, to reveal yourself to us. Whatever we're going through, wherever we are, Lord, reveal your holy presence to us and give us some mighty holy resolve. I have rediscovered the secret to life is Jesus. I have rediscovered the hope in my life is Jesus. I have rediscovered what makes me who I am. It is the grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I praise him today. Lord, we exalt you. We adore you. We love you. We open our hearts and lift our voices in praise unto you. Fill us, Lord, with the power of your Spirit. And lead us, Lord, as your servants to make a difference in this troubled world. In the mighty name of Jesus, we humbly pray. Amen. God bless you people. Call on Jesus. And let's see what happens this week. I believe he's got some blessings in store for each and every one of us. God bless you.